Yo, Kipping Sky here. Hey, so we are now on part four of Mini DSP setting our subwoofers up, getting them time aligned. We've got the parametric EQ going. We've made what was not too bad of a graph look really, really nice. And now we have a nice bass response with all three of my subs in my home theater. I'm super excited. It sounds great. I've been listening to a lot of music and movies. It's awesome. So in part four, what we want to do is just recap everything. We want to see what we had when we started versus where we are now and at this point we're ready to now run our respective room corrections so let's go ahead and get back into the laptop so this is the final graph that i have decided to be content with yes i can continue to make it flatter but i don't really want a flat sound i want a kind of energetic characteristic sound you know having a flat sound is great it's pretty neutral but i think Speakers that are the best speakers have a lot of character to them, a, 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 a special you note know, sound to them. And having a flat sound can be boring, so I'm happy with this. I may go back and make it a little bit better. I ended up making my own PEQ down here in the MIDI DSP. If I click on this here, we can take a look at it. So I made my own PEQ the way that I liked it. Looks good so far, should sound great as well. But we're pretty much done here. Yes, like I said, I can make this flatter, but I am pretty happy with this. The last thing that we can do in our mini DSP after getting this far, let's just go ahead and recap everything we've done. So if I click, let me turn this one off. So all subs, no calibration. This was all of my subs in my room with no calibration, no anthem room control. There was no time alignment. They were level matched, but that is it. And this is what I got. And honestly, you can go to sleep happy with this graph. It's not bad. We do kind of have a little bit of a dip around the 14 hertz range, maybe a little closer to 15. There's a slight dip just after 40. Our big problem area was after 100 hertz, which doesn't matter because I don't play my subs that high that often. But the line is pretty smooth. So after we figured out what our baseline is, we did measurements of each sub individually to see what each sub was doing in the room by itself. So this is the front right sub here. The orange one is our in ceiling sub in the front left. And then our blue sub here, this is the sub in the right back corner. So these, this is what all the subs are doing in your room by themselves. And then this bigger bar up here, this top orange one is what they do on all together. So again, the green sub is the front sub, front right. Orange sub is the instilling sub, and then the blue sub is the one in the back. So by themselves, they're everywhere. It's nuts. But when you time align them, you go from all this mess, let me click this off, to, let me find all subs. We get a much better line. Not only do we get a better line, but we get more output. So here's where we were by itself. And then here is where, I wish these both weren't orange. <laughs> so this is the line after everything's been time aligned. This is the line before it was time aligned. So before it was time aligned, we had this little dip here, this little dip here, and a big dip here. With all the subs time aligned, we didn't get rid of this dip down here, which isn't too terrible. It's down in the 14 hertz range, but we did get rid of this dip here just after 40 hertz, and we absolutely destroyed the dip here after 100 hertz, like 105 or so, it's a lot better. So time aligning our subs made our line so much smoother. So now this is our new baseline subs. So we weren't done yet. We wanted the time align even more. We did that and we end up getting with a graph that looked like this here. So now, all of our subs are even better time aligned. We've made it look a little bit better. We didn't necessarily get rid of our dip here. The orange one was where we were. We kind of moved it a little bit further back. This is now around 11, 12, 13 hertz. It's infrasonic, so we're not hearing it anyway. So this dip doesn't matter to me. Take a look at this blue one. We did add a dip, unfortunately, here. We added one around the 40 hertz region. We do fix that later, right? But we added one here, but we completely taken away the one at 100 hertz. Remember, the one at 100 hertz was this deep. It was sharp, it was low, it was bad. We then went from that to this. So here's where we started, and then 
the orange is where we started, the blue is where we are. So we've made a huge difference in the sound. We are continuing to go higher in overall output. We're getting more output back without raising the volume level at all. And we're getting rid of some of these severe knolls and severe peaks in our sound. So we're getting a more smoother, consistent response. It didn't stop there though. We made a lot of measurements today. So after we timeline everything, I went ahead and played with the phase. I changed the phase of the sub that's in the rear. And that's this measurement here. So now we've made an even better indention into our graph. Didn't really change much between 12 hertz up to about 30, 35. But notice now that dip that we had in the blue line is no longer gone. We are now keeping that consistent bass level right across between 30 and 40 hertz. That's an important frequency. That range there is very important. We got that back. Yes, we dropped off here about 50 hertz. We lost that, but we gained all of 55 and 60 hertz back. So let me get rid of this, um, this blue line here. This is now our baseline measurement here. We're even more smoother. Yes, overall, we did lose overall output, but that's because we had a huge peak at 45 to 60 hertz that we didn't really want. Yes, that's the kick drum range, but we don't want it to be too chesty overpowering. We're a little bit more smoother now. Again, it didn't stop here. So this is our baseline right now. In Room EQ Wizard, you can go into EQ and add a house curve and make your own PEQ, a parametric equalizer. You can have it auto EQ your system. And when we did that, this is what we got. This is auto EQ, which is fine. We added tons of bass output between 12 Hertz all the way to about 35. That's some strong bass output. We're hitting well over 100 decibels at a very moderate volume level on my receiver. I have it at negative 30 dBs on the volume knob. We're hitting over 100 dBs of pressure between 20 and 30 hertz. That's great, right? We added a house curve, meaning it starts to taper off after you get 70, 80 or so. So that's fine because now our speakers are taking over. But I didn't like that. I actually liked not having a house curve more than having one. Even though I have a lot of output here in the lower infrasonics, I still like the smoothness, smoothness of the line on um, measurement number 19 with no PEQ. But I didn't stop there. I went in and added my own PEQ. I went in to the mini DSP and I added my own PEQ, my own equalizer. So this is manual EQ, not auto, right? So I sat here for 20 minutes and I went through and changed my lines to try to fix some of these bigger peaks and these knolls. And so my final output looks more, that's the wrong one. It looks more like this. So I kept my output all the way from 12 Hertz up to 30 hertz stayed relatively the same, but I gained from that point on essentially. My 30 to 40 hertz got so much stronger, and then this dip right here, 40 to 53, I've smoothed that out. It's no longer as severe as a dip. I've gained almost 10 dB of output there. Try to fix this peak here uh, around 60 hertz. Really didn't have any success doing that. I can still play with it, um, but I left it here, and then I kind of added a little bit more. I boosted slightly 80 hertz range by 3 dB, nothing crazy, to try to get this a little bit closer to 60. So now my line looks like this. This is pretty close to as smooth as I'm going to get it without adding like room treatment and moving my subs and things like that. So I'm happy with this line. So let's recap again. Here's where we started with no EQ whatsoever, just level matching. Not bad, but we had some issues there. Then we time aligned everything, which is right about here. We time aligned everything. Things still kind of looked weird. We ended up fixing it and getting this line here. So we didn't start in a bad spot. That's not always gonna be the case. I have acoustic treatment in this room and I have placed my speakers um, with a lot of thought. I didn't just put them in random spots. I actually 
thought about where they need to go. So I had a good baseline. That will not always be the case for everybody, but it made EQing so much easier. I didn't have to do too much more um, after level matching it because they're already in good placements already. So very happy with this line. And now from this point, I can put my mic back into my listening position if it's not already there and go into my receiver or preprocessor and run my room calibration. My Anthem room calibration is what I am using, Anthem Arc Genesis. I can now run that Remember you have it set to one sub because even though I just calibrated three, I do have three total subs. Let me go back. I do have three subs here plugged to my DSP. My receiver or my preprocessor will treat them as one big sub. So any changes that it makes will affect all subs together. They will never be a different volume level. They will never be a different EQ. They will never be a different phase whatever they will now all act as one big sub giving you the best bass in your listening position and you cannot achieve this at all without some sort of dsp your receiver no matter how good it is except maybe trend off <laughs> you will need something like this um, to get these kind of results so now my bass will not only be louder than it was it'll be smoother with less volume very good so i'm going to run calibration and i'll show you what the measurement looks like with room EQ, all applied, all that good stuff. All right, for the finale, we're gonna measure. Room correction has been applied. I just reran Arc Room Genesis. So I'm gonna do this. All right, and this is now, we're gonna name this Anthem room so this is the final look at it so the blue line above it is where it was before anthem was ran the green line is after yes we are about four maybe five dbs less overall of total output but our line has smoothened out significantly so kudos to anthem for taking a already pretty good line and making it just that much better so we did lose output across the entire spectrum just about, but that's because these big valleys that I had trouble getting rid of, it, it got rid of it for me. It smoothed out a little bit. Actually, this looks pretty identical, but it smoothed out mostly that treble spot. This, this knoll down here at 53 hertz is no longer there. That peak at 60 hertz, 59, 58 hertz is definitely no longer there. And then if I, I have a, a cutoff now, I have a uh, crossover set to 80 hertz on my subwoofer. It goes, it plays an LFE of 120, but the subwoofer crossover itself is at 80 hertz. So my speakers play everything above that. So my line is really good. I'll show you just the green by itself. That is the subwoofer line and it is fantastic. And that is all three subs time aligned um, they are placed in their best spots in really good locations. There is acoustic treatment in here. They have been level matched. And then I applied my own EQ and then Anthem applied its thoughts on EQ. And this is what we have gotten. So now I am ready to play a movie, listen to it, crank it up loud. I know that all subs are performing at their best, all as one. So that is the power of a mini DSP or a DSP in general. If you think that you can just throw multiple subs in a room to fix your problems, you are going to cause more problems having multiple subs than you would with just one if you're not going to go through this process so keep that in mind if you have two or more subs and you don't plan to do anything like this don't continue to add more subs to your room you are completely wasting your money 100 percent i highly suggest you go out and get a mini dsp buy one used get it for a little bit cheaper they are closer to 300 dollars, maybe 250 now they are expensive, but this is what they do. And you can get multiple of these and use them for your speakers as well. They're not just for subs. You can calibrate the sound of your speakers too, if you want to. So it's a tool that will always and forever be in my system. I'm crazy to have not done this. I've lived in my house now for eight months and I have not done this yet. And now that I have, 
it's like having a whole new theater now. So I'm gonna listen and watch some watch some movies. I'm excited, uh, and I'll of course give you guys demos later on in the future. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is a very long process. It's well worth it. I'm not an expert, but hopefully I brought some advice or some tips to you guys on helping you use your mini DSP. Feel free to leave me some questions or comments down below. I'll be more than happy to talk to you in the comment section down below, email, whatever. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe if you are not already, and we will see you in the next video. Okay, peace guy out. Peace.